We need to get Tom Cruise's car out here overnight. I used to own a film car company in New York City. And we did things for movies and photo shoots and editorial and so forth. And every once in a while we'd get a special call. And we got a call for the promotion of Mission Impossible 3. This was for this promotional event where they were going to have Tom Cruise go to multiple movie openings in Manhattan in the same day. And I'm like, great, absolutely, whatever you need. Because you're in the film car business, but you say, absolutely, take care of it, not a problem. So we start talking to the studio and they hand us over to the Church of Scientology. Unbeknownst to us, I just started talking to this guy. He's like, Tom this, and Tom would like that, and Tom would like this. He, Tom would like uh, uh, a Lamborghini or a, a Bugatti, whatever that is. And I always remember, this, like, I will never forget that when he said a Bugatti or whatever that, that is. So we started looking for the vehicles. And uh, I actually, there were only three Bugatti Verones in the country at the time. And we called up Bugatti and uh, they, it was in Connecticut and we, maybe we could get it. And I had arranged it. And this was a, this was a huge scope, a huge scope. And we're jumping around looking for this thing. And two days beforehand, they're like, Tom doesn't want the Bugatti anymore. He wants a Celine Mustang. He owns a couple. And we were gonna get it from the, uh, well, the president of Celine was gonna donate his for the day. Dealing with the church was very interesting because to give you an idea of the scope, there was a meeting that in the meeting room of the Ritz Carlton, a hundred people, the longest table you've ever seen. At the end of it, the mayor's office, um, the police, fire department, special services, our team, and then one whole end of the table, 25 people are sitting there, obviously from LA. Cause when you're New from New York, you can tell people from LA, right? And they're all sitting there with blackberries doing this. And they look at each other and go, hey. For the whole meeting, they weren't even paying attention to what was going on. And uh, I came in late and I actually was sitting in the middle of them. It was really bizarre. And they had, they all talked through the, the Blackberries and it all went through this one guy who was Tom Cruise's handler, friend, assistant, and I forgot his name, but he was, he was a, scaled up version of Tom Cruise. Same haircut, same sunglasses, same looks, same clothes, except he was like five inches taller, which isn't difficult. He controlled the conversation and they were all doing their thing. And I never, I never understood why they were all there. I think it was just to have the presence to show how powerful they were or whatever. They're changing their minds back and forth. And I find out that it really is the church deciding these things, not really Tom making it. But they, they speak in his name. So they, uh, they changed their mind, it's now the Silly Mustang, it's two days out. So I call LA and I talk to the guys with the car and basically we need to overnight mail a Silly Mustang. Never done that before. They call up, can you do that? Absolutely. Take care of that, no problem. So we call around, we call FedEx, we call moving companies, we call everybody and we finally came to UPS. And of course we're gonna drop Tom Cruise's name. Like we need to get Tom Cruise's car out here overnight. And they went, let me transfer you. And suddenly I was talking to the most polite, nicest person ever, who was like, absolutely. Whatever you need, we'll make it happen. Give me 10 minutes, let me talk to my manager. Which usually means I'll call you tomorrow. Calls me back nine minutes later. She's like, I have our special team working on it and they'll be giving you a call. I'm like, okay. I get a phone call, the car has to be at this airport at this time, and it'll be in Newark. It's going from LAX to Newark overnight. And I still have no idea how they're doing it. And we make all the arrangements, it has to have less than half a tank of fuel, and the battery's disconnected, usual stuff, and there it is. All night, I'm staying up all night, because we got everything else arranged, except for this car. It's the only puzzle piece missing. And I have no idea how they're gonna do this. That's the promise they made. The price, by the way, of flying a car overnight from LA to Newark Airport, $13,000. Which, you think about it, it's reasonable overnight mail for something that weighs 4,000 pounds, okay. So I'm tracking it overnight, I'm calling them. They're like, it just landed in St. Louis. I'm like, you're, you're transferring planes? Like, that's incredible. And then it's on its way to Newark. I get to Newark like 6 a.m. and I'm there early. 
and I pull up to the special loading gate that they told me to go to. And the person's like, oh, good morning, Mr. Fakara. Uh, Mr. Cruz's car is arriving. Like, and it seemed like every single person there knew what was happening. And I come around the corner, they let me park right out by the plane. And uh, I'm like, all right. And the plane opens up, and it was right out of a movie, right? It opens up and out rolls this enormous pallet with the car on it, wrapped up, you know, with plastic to, to protect it. And I think nothing happened at UPS that morning. Like everybody's package was an hour late in New York that day because there was a hundred people out there wanting to see Tom Cruise's car. So they unwrap it, they take it carefully off of it, they all applaud when it finally starts up, they, all, they get a group photograph with the car. I mean, it's, Sailing Mustang's interesting, but it was just fascinating, the power of celebrity, really. So I get in the car and it's got a dent on it. And they're petrified and making excuses. I'm like, that's fine, you know, we'll take care of it. So I call my dent guy, he's gonna meet me at the garage when we come in. And I'll never forget driving it in, I had a, it had no gas in it, so I fill it up, and in Jersey, they have to fill you up with gas. So I come up, and the guy walks up, he comes out, they always come out with this kind of strut, and he walks out, and he's like, looks at it and goes, and he, he backs up, I'm like, you, you want me to fill this? And he's like, yeah, you, you fill that up. Cause, it was beautiful. It was the, one of those deep show paint jobs and it was burnt orange over burnt orange and it was just magnificent. So the final piece of the puzzle is there. It's the big day of the event. And so this is how it went down. Tom flies in on a helicopter, right? Lands on a pier on the west side. We get him a Hellcat motorcycle, which he rides down west side highway down to the first premiere. Goes in, everybody's loving him. Outside there is waiting the Mustang. He comes out, because what it is, he, they start the movie and then he leaves. So he comes out and then he rips a donut and flies down to the battery where we have a speedboat waiting for him. He goes up the Hudson to Harlem where we have a Maybach waiting for him. And the Maybach at that point was really new as well. He takes the Maybach to the premiere in Harlem then outside there, we have a fire engine and we get them all in the fire gear and we have a bunch of the first responders from 9-11 there and they ride down the east side um, near the FDR to the next premiere. And it went off beautifully and like everybody was thrilled and I was terrified and I had an ulcer at the end of it. But uh, that was one of the most unusual experiences we ever had in a long, long day. But uh, Tom Cruise got exactly what he wanted.